April 7th, 2020, COVID spring. Just out in the garden, it's still half snowed in as you can see. But over here, this part of the bed is thawed out. You can see the uh, tulip. That started growing when there was no beds here at all. This was just a barren, rocky hillside. So it inspired me to make all the beds and terraces. So you can see this one's getting a little pushed over. I'll have to adapt it. Up here I've got cactuses and a grape that's growing up over the trellis. A little pond here. It acts more like a slough at the moment. It's not complete. Garden beds there. We'll move on to the other beds here in a minute. This should thaw out here in another day or two if we get more days like this. It's plus seven today, so Celsius. So that's quite warm. So we're up in the upper gardens here, or the side gardens you could call them. <laughs> it is the higher level of the yard as you can maybe tell. Uh, we're probably 10 feet higher than the lowest elevation of the yard. Um, I have ponds here. This is frozen off here. I should actually move that ice if I can. Because there's a drain that goes right under this flower bed down into that pond. Now we can't quite get it out now, but hey, it's uh, as you can see, the water does collect there. You'll notice in this bed here, too, how with the shape of the bed, when it thaws or rains, the water pools there and it feeds the bed slowly. Over here where this pond is, I'm cutting down the tarragon that was here last year. As you can see, it gets over five feet high. It's rather impressive. Um, I, my French tarragon does the same. That's down in one of the lower beds. This pond here is filled up almost. Just with the rainwater. And it'll slowly leach out and feed the, the beds below. Um, I'm going to be putting a good layer of compost over these beds here as soon as possible long before it's even ready to seed just so that it's ready down here we have another bed another little pond not not as thought out as these ones are obviously another bed down here we'll be uh, cleaning out the beds and getting ready to plant here soon We actually have a literal flower bed, you can see right there, which is a snow drift at the moment. Down in the corner there we have raspberries. Over here we do have strawberries. Just a quick little garden tour for you on a fine spring day. There, so we got the tarragon trimmed off mostly. That should thaw this uh, drift out faster, allow the sun in. Trimmed off the cattails in the pond, which should allow it to thaw faster. If you're wondering what I'm using here, it's the Still HSA 45. This is the smallest trimmer you can get from them. It is electric, and believe it or not, I absolutely love it. Uh, it's not an exchangeable battery, it's plug-in, but I think this thing's like 145 bucks. It's not that expensive. And I can trim my hedge until I'm exhausted and have a day's worth of cleanup before the battery runs out. And so that's fine for me. If I was doing this industrial, no, it wouldn't work. But I have a fairly big hedge and a lot of yard. Uh, we have a quarter of an acre here. And so... It does really well for me. I'm impressed with it. I would suggest it to anyone. Great product. Just store it inside if you're in Canada over the winter so you don't freeze that lithium ion battery. Come on, focus. There we go. Um, great product. I use this, uh, if you're familiar with John Deere balers, I've used this cutting off bent flails to weld on the new ones. 
which is a tough job and it did really well with it um, saves me having to uh, bring out the chainsaw and ding up my chainsaw blade on a nail accidentally Let's see if I can do this one-handed Easy as that, and you got some boards for your fire. Or even if you want project wood, just torn apart easily, and then you can find finish it after. Great little tool. Um, definitely advise getting one if you want. If you have a need for a rip saw, it's been a very good one. So here's my compost. Um, most of what we're seeing on top here is what was emptied. There's a few old flower pots emptied out in there, so you get the dirt. Um, and then what was cleaned out of the chicken coop, which is straw and chicken manure. And then below that, there is whatever was cleaned out of the garden last year. There's a there's layers of leaves, layers of grass clippings. So I'm gonna see here because I turned over some of this earlier, and there you can see the steam come off it. So even with it being cold for a few days. This is melted down nice. The snow I put on here, all the snow's melted off the pile. So I'm going to try to turn this, see if I can get some usable compost below, and I'll put that on my beds today if I can. We'll see, it might be frozen solid a few inches down. I'll uh, update you shortly. Okay, so I dug down about two and a half feet wide here, a little trench along the whole compost pit. Uh, dug it all over to the left hand side. Now I'm taking and scraping along the top to mix it all over into that side. What I'm doing is taking off the bottom layer. This isn't perfectly composted yet, but it'll be a top layer on my beds. Um, and I might get the odd barley seed or something in there just from the chickens, but or you get the chunk of plastic. But you can pull all that out. And this will still, there's some grass. This will give the earthworms something to eat and it'll put down a bit of a bed to keep the weeds from growing up through. So I'll uh, continue. I forgot to film this one that was right empty. Um, standing beside the pile that was about four and a half feet tall. So there's a lot of compost in there because it's about four feet wide, five feet wide by seven feet long. So pretty good size amount of compost. Uh, should be able to cover some beds this year. My last ingredient is water. Uh, at the moment it's nice because everything's melting off so I got water running, easy access. So my rain barrels are still frozen so I fork this down, put down like eight inches. I'll put down probably four of these pails. Then I'll put down another eight inches. Just the more moisture this is, the faster it'll rot down. If it's just dry, it's not going to do much of anything. So, water, another important ingredient. So my next step is rather simple. Just weight in my body. Just walk along here. Compress that down. I don't want it super compressed, but just enough that it's quite wet. There'll still be air in there. Should rot down quite quickly. They'll shovel, shovel another layer on. Kind of a lasagna effect. Okay, you can see as we're getting into the core of the pile, we're getting some good steamy compost there. I say not completely composted, but that's okay because it gives a worm something. Mama's spreading the compost out on the beds for us. Besides the sculpture that she made. Once we have them spread over all the beds, and once we're ready to plant, we should have good nutritious soil and a nice uh, cover to keep the moisture in. So Mama Bear spread it out over this herb bed too. Um, this is actually just an old box it had a wooden bottom on it even 
that I just set down in the yard and just started filling full of compost over the years and it's become a herb bed so this is uh, around the apple tree Let me spread some more out here so then we also got up around these beds as you can see Mama Bear's done a lot of work spreading all this out for me. It really helped out a lot. Now we are supposed to get more snow Thursday, Friday, which will be just fine because that'll just add moisture right on top of this. We have more bed over here to go around, but we'll put some on there. We did nine wheelbarrow folds today out of the compost bed. Okay, so we're done for today. Um, we took 10 wheelbarrow fulls out of the compost pile and spread them on the vet on the bed uh, I've turned the entire compost pile and watered it and then I turned it all over the one side dug out what was good compost below put it on the beds moved the whole thing back over mixing it again stamped it all with my boots one more time just to even out the moisture in there and uh, within probably a week, we'll be able to take out wheelbarrow fulls of compost again. So this is the composter that my brother actually built. Uh, he gave it to me when he moved. And uh, as you can see, it's still a little frozen, but it's making some really good compost as well. So this will be awesome just to add to the mix in one of the beds with this whole uh, COVID-19 here this spring my wife and I both got a little bit of a chest cold and so ended up quarantining ourselves at home here just like most of you all are so today was the first really nice day the sun's starting to go down but Still quite lovely out. So it's been good to get outside and see the fresh air. I wanted to share it for those of you who are maybe stuck inside. There's a, we're able to self isolate on our own property, but still get outside, which is a blessing. And we got some work done and definitely got our exercise today. Be sore tomorrow for sure. But hey, it's a good way to get myself back in shape for work again. Hope everybody is uh, healthy and uh, hope life is good.